so lovely tonight. Thank you for joining us. You are at the most exclusive lounge in town. Tonight we have the Illphonics. I'm CB Chaz. I play the drums for Illphonics. My name is Keith, and I'm the keyboard player for Illphonics. My name is Kevin Kaler. I play guitar and uh, occasionally help out doing some recording with the band. My name is Larry, aka Fallout MC in Illphonics. My name is Simon Spag Sherbet. I'm the bassist for Illphonics. Paget. Paget was crazy. Oh my god. That was like the first like pinnacle of my musical career, I would say. We had to get people to come out to support, you know, in order to flip the whim. So you now they gave us tickets to pass out. It was really, really good. I mean, for us, we had played so many small venues prior to getting to the pageant that when we got to the pageant, it kind of gave us the realization of where we could go as a band if we really, really worked hard. We completely own the stage. Like, I, I don't like to brag often, but that's not a, that's not bragging, that's a fact. Life changing for me, because a uh, big stage, packed house, and uh, we didn't fold under pressure. We did what we, what we do, we killed. Like we murdered that stage, like we murdered the show, like we had the entire like audience with us that night. I think it was just, I don't know if it was a unanimous decision when we won, but I'm pretty sure when we got off the stage, the other, the other bands knew that they, they didn't win that night. It was good, I mean, a dream realized and discarded. The trip to Tulsa, like Mayfest was cool, I thought it was gonna be like, I thought it was gonna be something more than what it was, but for what it was, it was all right. I just remember on the way back, like we were gonna stop, or we actually did stop the dropping on the way back and got gas. What we were gonna decide to do was get something to eat, but everybody looked in the sky and was like, you know what? No, no, we not stopping. Cause the air was kind of thick and whatnot. I don't think we knew that at the time. That was, I don't remember it. I ain't gonna lie, I don't remember that shit at all. Like, at all. Like, I can't tell you nothing from that. We got on the highway, rolled back, stopped in Joplin, Missouri, which is a, uh, you know, everybody knows Joplin got flattened by a tornado, but this happened to be the day that it did get flattened by the tornado. We was probably, an hour ahead of the storm, we stopped and jumped in to get gas. We was like, man, let's get something to eat. We looked back to the west, we was like, nah, fuck that. It's from the storm off of this motherfucker. So we should, and we should fast, and we did not look back. Although I was looking back, because I wanted to see it. That tornado had went right through Joplin, and we were all on the phone with each other like, this is nuts. Like, we were just down there. So, yeah, Illphonics, we um, escaped probably what would have been a really bad situation if we would have stuck around, stayed, got snacks, food, or whatnot, or sat down to eat. Rocking for Barack was a complete disaster. Rocking was bullshit. <laughs> Oh man, oh um, shit. A good idea that was not executed well, I would say. Uh, I mean, we went to Chicago and that whole show ended up being a total mess. That whole situation was was crazy. Like we, we the, the hotel, the experience, like the standing in the hotel, the walking around, going to the Bugatti store, all that shit, that, was like, that shit was tight. The show was different. Very, but uh, it was a good time. I say Chicago. When I'm thinking that, I think of Chicago. That's the only thing I can think of. And I think of aerobics. The Alhambra Palace didn't want it there, from what we were told, because uh, we were hip hop, and they didn't want that type of music in their their venue. I mean, it wasn't the worst show ever, but it ended up being in a fitness place, like where there are mirrors and as we were setting up, there was like females getting their like stripper workout, the, you know, stripper pole workout thing going on, which, you know, I'm not gonna argue with that. The cool thing is when we got back to the hotel that got paid for, thank God, um, 
the guys in the band got to hang out with Eric Robinson, DJ Premier. We went up at this bar outside the hotel, um, and DJ Premier came down. We was talking to him for a while, and Eric Robinson. It was cool. That was I, probably the best part of that night. DJ Premier, he was cool. Uh, met some dude. He was like taking pictures of people. He like made a face at me. I made a face back at him and took that picture. I still got that picture. It's a good picture. Uh, yeah, there it is. That's the one. The benefit for Joe from Bernie Sanders was cool. Um, shout out to Sleepy Kitty for putting on the event. Um, shout out to uh, well, Off Broadway for having us there. It was my first time there. It was a pretty cool venue. Uh, the crowd was very, you know, engaged. Um, they definitely like one of our songs. Uh, they like the whole show, but they definitely responded to the song on our album called The Brown Frequency. We played a new song called The Brown Frequency, which, you know, kind of a, a socially conscious song about the Black Lives Matter movement. And, you know, the only candidate who's really been outspoken about that is Bernie Sanders. So to, to play that to a crowd and, the, you know, there's a sing-along section that we, we got going and everybody was into it. And uh, I think Larry said earlier, it was like an out-of-body experience. And I would say that it was, some. I, I, I felt something similar to that as well. Oh, that was perfect. That was a very, very good show. I mean, the crowd was digging it, and we got a, uh, a lot of new listeners that had never heard us before, so that was definitely, definitely, like, it was on point. And we were on point. We've been playing so many shows over the years that no, it's only a few shows that stand out, but that one stood out because we premiered a song called The Brown Frequency. And it's very rare that I feel like I do a song and I nail it. I nailed that song. Like I felt like a, it was like an out of body experience. People really were into it and whatnot. And I think it was cool because we, our music, I wouldn't say that it's the most conscious, but I feel like we have good messages in our music, but that's one of our songs where I feel like it's very direct on what we're saying. We're speaking to police brutality and the injustices there. So it was really, really cool to premiere that and see that people really dug it. So. The show went well. I feel that it was our first time at Off Broadway, which is a important venue in the South St. Louis music scene. Uh, it was good. Ah man, California. Oh California. Oh man, California, California. Oh my God, California was a uh, that was definitely like life changing, like um. Being on the West Coast, based off of music that we, we created together as a band, which got us there, that alone was just a humbling experience because, like, we never been, like, not that far, you know what I mean? I never seen the water before. Pull up to Venice Beach in the rental, this shiny white truck, and some other car was on either side of this, uh, super narrow parking space. And as we pull in, we feel like perhaps this turn wasn't executed to the fullest, you know, the best of uh, our driver's capabilities. So we scratched the shit out of this white truck, which was super unfortunate. And then we panicked a bit. We was like, what should we do? We looked down the, uh, the lot over there. We see, oh, it's a whole bunch of spots to easily pull into, perhaps we should have used one of those. San Diego, it was a cool show. It was a Monday, we were playing there at airport, you know, but we had a good friend, D. He flew in to actually see us, which was really incredible. We had Mike and Margie, they're our super fans. They came out and helped us carry equipment. So it was kind of just breaking us in, getting us comfortable and whatnot. San Diego is a very beautiful place. We stayed with a guy named Asher. Asher had a unique, house situation but you know we made it work but it was a good time like we had a, a night to spur so we all kicked out. i went to sleep for a while but when I, I, I was awakened to like chad's coming back in the room like we got some forties. <laughs> so we stayed at this little hostel uh, the book the banana bungalow so we came back to the room like, we got some forties. so I, I woke up like wiped the sleep out of my eye drank some forties. you know we partook in some herbary and then we hit the night, you know, like we went to this club around the corner from the, uh, the bungalow in West Hollywood and, and 
and kid walks in this mug. And we was in there dancing with some chicks, but then kid walks in and chicks just disappear. We know what happened to the chicks. <laughs> and then we know what happened to dance with kids. It was crazy. We played at the Grand Green Saloon, and we actually, it was an open door show. People were able to come in and out. People were bringing folks in, the owners and everybody loved us. We did like three hours of our music and people stayed and watched. And that was really amazing because it was San Francisco. So the band's first ever out of town performance was at the Blue Fugue in Columbia. What do you remember about that show? Uh, what I do remember about that show is, um, I think a couple of the other guys probably have talked about it, but uh, the band that we played with, what stands out the most, the band that we played with, you know, we was all humble. Our first time out of town, you know, uh, we just started the band, we just debuting tunes, you know, show, showing people our songs. So the band we played with came in, suited up, all gray suits. Um, you know, they, they, oh yeah, you know, dude, this is what we do. We, we, we just be real arrogant about the situation. And the name of that band, I think, at the time was, uh, it was called It's Over. And, uh, what a band name. Um, but, something that, you know, became a, Something that happened kind of consistently after the show is that Bill Fonix would play a stage pre prior to the last band, and then the whole room would clear out before the last band. I mean, I don't feel great about that, but I mean, like, I don't have any control over what the crowd's gonna do. But we did so well that people just weren't interested in anything that was to happen afterwards. So, uh,. Basically, it's over. Played to a, an empty room, and <laughs> whenever that happened again to any other band uh, that played afterwards, we would say that we it's over that band. So it's over became a verb used in the past tense, which we would do to other bands that would play afterwards after our set. And that happened at least. I mean, it still happens. Uh. My syndicates, plus intricate. Stop trying to act call your 